morning dolls and welcome to little Gretchen's workshop. So the laundry room is in need of some details. You know, we've got the main components in the hot water tank, the washing machine. But when I was growing up, our old house had a laundry chute. There was a small door on the wall in the basement and you would open the door and the dirty clothes would fall out. And there was usually a door up in either the bathroom or in the hallway outside the bathroom. So that's what I'm going to make today. Now to make it all make sense, I will need to put a small laundry chute door either in the rooming house bathroom or in the hallway just outside the bathroom. So I will need to put that on my list. <laughs> so no dolls, it's not actually going to open, but it's going to look really cute and I think it'll add a lot of detail and interest to the laundry room. So I'm using a small piece of scrap basswood. So after I cut the little piece, it was approximately two inches high and one and a half inches across. So in scale conversion, in real life, that would be two feet tall and one and a half feet across. I am going to add some coffee stir sticks to the outside of it so it'll have that beadboard look just like the rest of the wall so it'll actually look like it has always been there. So here I'm measuring out about how long they need to be so I'll know how much I need to cut off including the little rounded ends. And I am using my little easy cutter to trim off those little rounds, but just trying to get idea approximately how many of the sticks I need to cover the outside of the door. And it ended up being about six pieces. And again, I used my easy cutter to cut off the rounds after I measured them to the length and then lined them up. Now, some of my cuts were kind of rough dolls. You know how I do. I don't do exact measurements, so there's always something to trim and shave off at the end, but no worries. I just wanted to make sure that the whole door was completely covered where you wouldn't see the piece of basswood at all. And then I added my glue, a nice thin layer because I didn't want a lot of oozing. Now the coffee stir sticks are already stained so the glue can't hurt them, but dolls, you don't want to be messy or wasteful with your glue. And as you know, the walls of the laundry room are green, so I will be painting them. Now I did add two short pieces of the coffee stir stick across the bead board to mimic the design of the walls. So now I'm gonna let that dry. Now dolls, for the hinges, I wanted to use something that looked a little rugged and I decided on using these springs that I cut off of some of those tiny clothespins I have. I thought they looked perfect to be the hinges for this laundry chute door. Now they're a little shiny, so I'll definitely need to age them, but I think the size and the shape is perfect. So I cut it off using my wire cutters and always be careful not to pinch your fingers. And I just laid the hinges aside until the paint on the door is dry. And remember dolls, these aren't working hinges. They're just there to make it look as though they're opening hinges. Now my door is dry and they look really good. And I do believe I'm going to attach them right there where that bar is. And that's going to give the illusion that this is a working door, although we'll never open it. So now I need something that would make a great handle. So I shook out some things from my box of possibilities and so many ideas came to me dolls that it was really hard to narrow things down. Sometimes dolls you have to try out your idea because although you imagine it, sometimes it makes more sense in your head than it does in real life. But I had to try it. I had a dress hook and I wanted to try and see if it would look right. But after I picked it up, even though it was nice and it really wasn't bad, it looked good as a door handle. But I thought it looked a little bit out of scale for such a small door. And then I used an actual door knob to lay next to it for size. And even though it's cute, I still thought it was a little bit big. So I decided to just use the half of a jump ring like I did for the doors of the hot water tank. So I decided I wanted the door to be raised and have a frame around it. So this is a leftover frame from one of the windows in the Roaming House dollhouse. So I trimmed it down to scale and reattached it to be the size of my little laundry chute door. So while the door frame is drying, let me show you something that I wanted to repurpose for this room. 
It's a little plain basket that I used for years in my original dollhouse as a vegetable bin. I added wire handles to it that weren't originally there, but now I want to use it as a laundry basket in the roaming house. So in order to make it stand out a little bit better in the laundry room, I decided to paint it with this color that's called linen. I thought that was an appropriate color for a laundry basket, linen, but it's actually by folk art and I've used it for so many different things. It's sort of like a, a beige or maybe an antique white color, but I thought it was perfect for this little basket. So I painted the inside and outside and set it aside to dry. So I had another piece of that scrap wood. Well, actually it's the same piece, but I saw something else. I began to think about some of the other components and accessories that should be in a laundry room. And I realized I didn't have a washboard. So I decided to make a quick one. So I trimmed off the extra piece of the scrap piece of wood and it ended up being the perfect size for what I wanted to do. It's funny how sometime a little scrap will be exactly the right size for a whole project. So after I trimmed off the excess piece of wood, I realized I needed to add something that would look like grates. So I used some of the leftover coffee stir sticks and cut them to the width of the little board I had just cut. And here I am just dry fitting the little pieces on top of the board just to make sure that I had cut them the right length. Now dolls, you know those coffee stir sticks were not cut perfectly, so I will have to trim it. But I just want to make sure they completely cover the piece of board before I begin to trim it. So I put a thin layer of the Gorilla Wood glue on the board and again the pieces are already stained but I'm going to paint them anyway. So I put my one, two, three blocks on them and allowed it to dry. So now that my laundry chute door is dry, I painted it that same succulent color by folk art that I'm using in the laundry room. And I really love this green, dolls. I just absolutely love it. It just has such a vintage feel, and it reminds me of some of the old things I used to see as a little girl. So I put two nice coats of the green on the door and around the frame. Dolls, I'm excited about getting to the finishing of the door because I'm looking forward to making it just as worn and distressed as the walls are. Dolls, when I'm distressing things, I really like to think about what is the history of the piece? What has it been through? This is a really old door and it's been painted and stained over and over again. It's been bumped and scuffed and yanked because nobody wants to do laundry. <laughs> Dolls, I have to be honest, I'm enjoying this project so much because I think it's going to add so much interest to the laundry room. The funniest part is I don't actually know where I'm going to put it on the wall. <laughs> So let's get back to the washboard now that all the pieces or the grates are dry. And so I'm just shaving down some little thin layers on the sides to make sure that when I add the legs, everything lays flat and neat. And it didn't take much dial. Just trimmed it a little bit with my sharp craft blade. A sharp knife really makes a big difference in miniature dials because you never want to take off too much. And after I felt like I trimmed it enough, I went ahead and sanded both sides smooth with my sandpaper. And the sanding is just making the assembly much easier. Everything will fit really, really neat and flat. Now I'm adding two bars, which will be like the legs of the washboard. I am leaving that little space above the grates where you would put either your soap or a towel or something. And so I'm marking it where I wanna cut it and I'm using my little saw blade to just trim off the excess. Now always be careful of your fingers when you're using the saw, but you just wanna measure the little pieces so they'll come just past the area where the grates are so that things will sit a little higher than the pan of water the dolls are using to wash their clothes. Now that I've cut the two pieces, I'm gonna just lay them next to the grates to see how they fit. I always dry fit my items dolls before I begin to glue. You always want to make sure that how you're visualizing it will actually work that way when you begin to assemble it. Now you see here I did cut a small piece of coffee stir stick to be the top and I cut that piece a little bit short so I had to swap it out for a piece that was a little bit longer that will completely cover the legs that I add and the top of the board. Once I realized I was comfortable with those three pieces, I did realize I did need to put a piece at the bottom of the grates 
to finish off that portion of the board. And I used another piece of my square stick and cut it where it will sit perfectly at the bottom of the board under the grates. And dolls, after you're sure that all your pieces will fit properly, go ahead and begin to add your glue. Now again, always be very sparing when you add your glue because you don't want a lot of oozing and you don't want things looking gloppy and messy and you don't want to waste your glue. I just added one piece at a time and it adjusted it as I needed to, making sure to wipe away any oozing glue before it dries. And I think this little washboard turned out really cute. This little piece would definitely fall into the category of trash to treasure because it was made primarily of scrap and remnant pieces of other projects. So keep in mind, dolls, your scraps are not trash. They're just materials that you haven't found a use for yet. <laughs> And now that the body of the washboard is complete, I just have to add that little finishing piece under the grates. And there we go. See, I cut the piece of wood almost perfect. There are no gaps. It's not bunching. It looks pretty good, dolls. I really am pleased with this little piece. Let me go ahead and allow it to dry while we finish up that laundry chute door. So now that the paint is all dry, dry enough to handle, we can go ahead and assemble it and add the door to the actual frame. So dolls, I added a thin bead of glue around the edge of the door. Again, just little by little because you don't need much. This glue really holds really, really tight and you don't need a lot of it to get good adhesion. So here I added the little door to the door frame. And I think that's going to look absolutely perfect. Now, do you see I kind of set it kind of at an edge because I still need to relieve room for the hinges. I forgot and put the glue out too far. But no worries, dolls. I'm just wiping it off. And you see I scraped a little bit of the paint off. But no worries, dolls. I'll add the hinges and make all those scrapes and scuffs look like that was a part of the distressing. Mm -hmm. Now I did add a generous amount in the corners for the hinges and any overflow or build up, it'll just look like corrosion from the years of use and rusting. Dolls, I really like the way this little laundry chute door turned out. It looks really, really good. I think it's very authentic and I can't wait to start distressing and aging it. So I'm going to let the door sit aside and dry before I start to distress it. And while it's drying, let's go ahead and paint that washboard. So now that the washboard is dry enough to handle, I want to go ahead and cause the little grates to look as though they're metal. Now, dolls, we all know that they're wooden, but with a little aluminum colored testers paint, they'll actually look metallic. At least to me, they will. And you just want to use a really tiny detail brush because you don't want to get metal paint on your wood part. Now, dolls, you could have used painter's tape to put on the legs to ensure you don't get the metallic paint on them, but just use a really small brush and take your time. And keep in mind, this is edited video. So here we are with the door. The jump ring has been added as the handle. The paint is dry. The hinges are dry. So it's time to distress and age the door. So I'm using 100 grit uh, sandpaper to just really kind of scuff it up and scrape some of the paint off of it. I generally like to do this when the paint is still a little bit damp, but I didn't, dolls. It is absolutely dry, so I do have to scrape a little bit more. If you sand it or scrape it while the paint is still a little bit damp, you still are able to retain some of the color from the stain. When you sand it after everything is dry, it takes away the stain and the paint. So keep that in mind, dolls. Distressing it or scraping off paint when it's a little damp is always better. So I will have to add a little bit of stain to these areas that I scrape off. But no matter what, it's going to lend to the aging process because this door has been through a lot being in an old brewing house laundry room. The heat, the cold, the moisture, all the handling, all the different hands. It definitely has been through literally the ringer. <laughs> now you see I added a little black wash to those hinges just to start the aging process. So here I am with my stain just dropping it in little areas where I scraped off too much paint and the color. 
even though this wasn't my original intention, I really do like the way the stain is making the surface of the paint look a little grimy. So sometimes, dolls, when you're doing things, it's not intentional, but it works out well anyway. I really like the way this door is turning out. I think many times wonderful inventions came out of mistakes. So consider sometime your mistake actually is an invention in disguise. <laughs> and here I am, dolls, just wiping off some of the excess stain and kind of rubbing it into the wood. The dampness from the cloth and the paint being a little bit damp from the stain is actually working out because it's causing some of the paint to come off. And that's the look I really wanted in the beginning. One of the hardest parts of staining, distressing, or really trying to age your miniature, the hardest part is knowing when to stop, knowing when enough is enough, because sometimes you can go on and on. So in order to distract myself to move on, I went on and used that same stain that I already had out for the laundry chute door and went ahead and stained the remaining parts of the washboard. I'm really excited about adding these little accessories to the rooming house laundry room. It's these kind of accessories that really add to the story and the history to a room or a scene. Dolls never neglect the importance of the details because it's the little things that tell the story and it's the little things that make things really interesting and bring them to life. I really love how this stain is just instantly making this washboard look vintage and old. So that's all done. Let me set it aside to let it dry. So I just wanted to add a little finishing touch to the door and I did add a little bit more of the black wash to the hinges. I also added a little hint of the burnt sienna to the hinges to make them look a little bit rusty. Now dolls, take note of the area between the door frame and the actual door where I scraped away the paint to give definition between the door frame and the actual door and just create distinction between the door and the frame to imply that the door actually opens. Now dolls, I don't like those little areas on the door where the oil from the stain are showing up. So I'm going to counteract that with one thin coat of the matte Mod Podge and that will take down the shine from the stain on the surface of the paint. So this is just a really simple trick. Just kind of keep it in your bag. It definitely will make everything look blended and neat so that the distressed pieces won't have a, a wet or damp look in the areas where the stain was. And although that looks shiny and white, it's going to dry absolutely clear and matte. Now dolls, if you enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments and also like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I just want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers. I am blown away by how many of you it is at this point. I feel totally honored that you have chosen to take this journey with me. And also a thank you to those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. I have so many things in store for you to complete the laundry room in the rooming house. So definitely stay tuned and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.